Hi guys, it's your girl Claudia Jordan and we are back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So whatever y'all got trending, that's what we're going to co- we're going to cover here in this show. Now sit back, relax, get you something to drink and get ready to sip on this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hey rat. Hey Al. You go call me a rat. <laughs> I was going to say Ral. I don't know. I was like Ral. Hey Ral. Not rat. Ral. <laughs> What's going on, Claudia? What's up? What's going on? You good? Yeah, you know, I'm here in D.C., but... Oh, you know, I love D.C. I love yeah, D.C. Yeah, yeah, this is one of your favorite places, right? It is. I love it. Every time I go, I'm like, why did I live here? But you you was over it when you were there, right? You, you want to go yeah, back Yeah, I, I got over it a little bit. It's very conservative. Mm. But for someone like you, who's really into politics, they would eat you alive. You would love it. I would let them eat me alive. Okay, and mm. please welcome Armand Wiggins. What's up, Armand? <laughs> What's going on, guys? I'm here, and I'm ready to get into some things. Okay. Okay. I just want to say that, you know, we're very much popping because people are reaching out. They want to be on the show. Some are a little scared, but don't be scared. It's not going to hurt. We won't bite. And, you know, if you can stand on business, you are welcome to be here on Fox all on TJF. Don't you all welcome? Don't Are we welcoming? We're welcoming people, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm welcome. I think everyone should come. That's what makes the show good, though. You know, don't be afraid. Come up here. We can all stand on business like professionals. You know, we know how to conduct ourselves and have, you know, conversations. That's what makes it work. Yeah. And I'm the nicest of the three. So you guys. Anyways, first of all, (laughs) first of all, and we are, we are getting what you on. So we could. All right. All right. Y'all drink it tonight. Absolutely. I'm having my buttery Chardonnay right here with the, with ice. Don't forget to put some ice in your buttery Chardonnay. It's a good way to make it nice and cold. It just hits different. All right. Let it hit you different. And Armand, are you drinking? Um, I'm having a sparkling uh, water, passion fruit, passion fruit flavor, sparkling water. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm drinking water. Birthday trip next week and I want to be snatched. Okay. Oh, where are you going? Bahamas. Because they have a casino on the beach, my two favorite things. Oh, you so, love yeah. to gamble. Let me find out. <laughs> oh, I have a gambling problem. It's 1,000% facts. <laughs> I own who Welcome, I am. Our mind. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. Let's get into these topics. All right. Let's kick off the show with some feel-good news. OT Genesis made an onstage apology to Keisha Cole for trolling her and her family. Take a look. We was kind of going at it. And listen, and listen, it was me, it was, it was me, you know what I'm saying, it was me. And I just want to sit here today, I want to tell you I apologize to you. I think it's like it's a I want to tell you I'm sorry. Okay, all right. Although Keisha accepted the apology, Keisha says it's but not in this on the same page. Her sister Elite wrote, bleep, go kiss my mama's grave. And then you can be forgiven. Now, Keisha's sister, Nephi, also demanded that OT Genesis apologize to everyone and not just their famous sibling. Keisha responded, they're entitled to feel that way. I chose differently and with forgiveness. It all happened publicly, so he apologized publicly. Are you glad these two squad were able to squash their beef? Armand, let's go to you first. What do you think, Armand? I think the apology was necessary, but I also understand what the sisters are saying. Like, I'm not forgiving you. F you. You know, you didn't apologize to me. You apologize to my favorite, um, my famous sister. So at the end of the day, you know, I think that they're justified in their in their way that they feel. And I think that Keisha Cole is justified in her feeling as well. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm glad to just see that the men apologize for disrespecting her and her mother and her whole family, especially because, you know, he sampled her song without her permission. So it is what it is. <laughs> That the feud started over OT Genesis. He did an unauthorized cover of Keisha's hit song, Love Out. What do you think about this? Listen, this is why we love Keisha Cole. Not just the, because, A, she accepted it, but this is also why we love Keisha Cole's family, because other half has said Keisha might be over it, but we're not. Um, I do, though, think that it, it just speaks volumes to him coming on stage on a public platform. Of course, it goes viral and apologize. And that's huge for me. And I think it's super huge for her being the one that that he he did wrong to say, I accept your apology. To me, it just made me feel good. I would rather see two of our very influential black artists getting along than not. So for me, this is a thumbs up across the board. 
Uh, Shay's Adventure said, nah, he's bogus as hell for that. Real mad, fra uh, flagrant. And Bettina Lester said, forgiveness is good. Holding grudges just wears you down. I like that he did it publicly. I will say that. A lot of times their disrespect is very pu uh, public and the apology is private. And it's like, okay, yeah, we know, but the, the public doesn't. And uh, unfortunately, the public has a lot to say and they weigh in on this stuff. So I'm glad that hopefully that's a step in the right direction for them too. All right. In other music industry news, Lizzo's recent tweet had fans speculating that she may be quitting music. Lizzo wrote, all I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. She added, I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and abuse, being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look, my character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this bleep. I quit. Now Lizzo posted a video response to clear up any confusion. Take a look. I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Oh, we're going to go to you first on this one. Sure. And Lizzo, let me tell you what I'm going to quit doing. I'm going to quit following you and your antics. You're just like Little Nas X. I knew that this was some play or baiting that you were doing or trolling the public because that's what you do best. Clearly you got a project you're working on it that you're gonna release a new song or an album because we know this is what you do. You cry, you want sympathy, you go on this sympathy tour and then you come back, you get the sympathy, we follow you again, enough. Listen, you're way too talented. Your music is way too good. You're just multi-talented, mostly faceted to be doing this. Let your music speak for your talents and not all these antics. It's just giving me annoying. It's very misleading. I feel like you're trolling me and I don't like it. So listen, if you don't quit doing this to me, I'm going to quit following you, <laughs> period. Uh, but Tina Lessa said she brings it on herself. Armand, do you agree? What do you think? Wow, I feel like, oh, shoot. I mean, there's nothing else to be said after that. You said exactly what I would say. Um, at the end of the day, I just feel like artists do this. We've seen this happen with Doja Cat. We've seen this happen with Cardi B. Lizzo is no stranger to this. She did this back in 2019. I find artists playing to this sympathy role and trying to blame the public when they're scrambling for their next big hit. When they don't know what to do, when they don't have anything coming out, when they haven't figured out their next formula, then they go to the internet and start crying so that when they promote their next project, that we feel bad for them. And let's not forget Lizzo, okay? She's still being sued for fat right. shaming, sexual harassment. Don't be fooled for the fact that she's performing for the president and performing at the Grammys which, you know, no man in the world would have been able to do that. But because, you know, she's overweight, she's a woman, and she's not what people would consider universally beautiful, she gets a pass for all of these things. So let's not forget that, Lizzo. We're not going to forget the fact that you got some serious allegations against you, and so you're not going to get on here and cry for sympathy, and we're just going to forget about those things that you did to those other big girls. Mm -hmm. Now, Ahmad, I can't let you slide with that comment about it because she's a, a big woman. While Dr. Dre is out here with, we know that he don't beat down D Barnes and getting lifetime achievement awards. Let's not act like men it don't still get their love too. I will agree with you on this. I do think Lizzo's antics do take away from her talent. I think with Lizzo, it's a, you know when you like you know you have a shortcoming, and we are, we're gonna call it. You know, being overweight in the industry is definitely going to be something that people are going to come for you for. I think this is like this blew up in her face. I think she tried to like beat the folks to it. Like I'll make, I'll do self-deprecating, you know, things about myself. But you, you, you went far, Lizzo. I, I, I personally got tired. I'd be trying to rob you, but I really can't. I can't. We have your butt of that games all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but two things can be true at the same time. I also think she does get, she does get dragged a lot. But you do help. You give them the stuff to drag you for. If I was, if I had that face and if I had that talent to play the flute, you see me, you would just see my face in a flute and I'd be like, am I in here? My voice. voice, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's what I would give you. I would not give you, um, I would not give you material. Even that message just now in the bathing suit, all loose on her boobs, boobs hanging all low. You're still giving us more things to be like, I ain't gonna lie. It, it's distracting. And that's nature. and people online can be fake if you want to exactly. and say, oh, who cares? That's beautiful. You know that people are cruel and they're going to come for that. They're going to know that. 
And Lizzo, I think you are gorgeous. I think you're talented. And you do have a lot of stuff, you know, get some allegations, stuff like that. But if I was you, I'd only be focusing on my talent. I wouldn't be making these statements in a bathing suit either. I would just make it about Like you sat there in a bright blue bathing suit with a blonde wig on, body shaped like that, making a statement that you're not quitting music after you kind of alluded to the fact that you might be quitting. You know what I mean? This She's just a big troll. But because, yep. but people love the underdog. So they're going to be like, she's beautiful. This is, be this is beauty. This is nice. You guys are dragging it. Let's be clear. This does not look good. Period. Mm -mm. Uh, Brooklyn Libra said she can go and perform for the president of Ozempic. See? <laughs> and then uh, Miss uh, K. McGee said, isn't this like her third time? Miss Matt Ma said, Lizzo needs to put on some clothes. It's tiring. And Joseph Savage, agreeing with Azalea Banks, said it's best. Oh, said it best. Stop twerking. Azalea Banks said it best. Stop twerking in front of hot dog stands and maybe we'll respect you better. Lizzo, you either want to like put it out there, like do you self-deprecating humor where you take the, the, uh, the, the, the jokes or you don't call attention to it and then you have a legitimate case for people being mean to you. You can't really do both. I think that's the best advice I can give you. Uh, you can't do both. All right, another artist who threatened to leave music and social media is back in the limelight due to the backlash surrounding her recent album cover. Doja Cat posted a photo of her natural little curly and apparently uh, hair, and apparently her fans were not here for it. Check this out. People comparing my hair to sheep and and carpet and popcorn and like that. Like, let's move forward. Let's grow. Let's let's stop. Let's cut. Let's um, because I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your. I'm not your parents. Pubic hair, really? All right, Al. What do you think? You know, welcome to the club. <laughs> now you know what biracial and black people get all the time from the majority. They always want to touch your hair and say, "Ooh, your hair is so interesting. It looks like sheep hair," or "Oh, oh, it looks like cotton," and all that stuff. Welcome, Doja Cat. We know that you are a mixed young lady. Uh, this is what we've been going through for years. For years, I don't know if Claudia ever had this experience, but people when I was growing up, because of what my hair texture was, people always wanted to touch it. They always wanted to, to tell me what I needed to do to make it do what they wanted it to do. Um, so I, I, I get it. But the thing that I do if I find a positive here is I actually like the posts. I actually like the photos of her hair. I like actually like her showing the black texture side of her hair because we know that she is of this race and i think i think it has a deeper meaning behind it i think doja cat went through a lot of separation from her fans in 2023 we know some say between a quarter of a million and a half a million stopped following her and i think she's building that back in a more organic and real way and we know hair is one of the best ways to to build um your a, a new base or a very stronger base because people can relate to hair issues. I say it's a thumbs up and I like the transparency and I like the new side of Doja Cat. All right, uh, Armand, what do you I'm think? I'm over it. She went from, you know, calling herself the N-word and tiny chats to becoming, evolving into a devil and now she wants to be black. You know, I just feel like after quitting music each time she's done this, you know, she recently came out and said that she was done with Instagram. She quit music. She hated her fans. And now here we are. For, and I'm not I'm not mad at her for it, but let's just talk about it. Here we are for the fourth umpteen uh, rebrand of Doja Cat. I didn't see a lot of people dragging her about her hair. This is just to get people talking about the album and the new rebrand of Doja Cat at this point. She's just, she's no different than Lizzo, another troll. She pulls these antics every time it's time to release music. Like, I'm over it. I don't know what to think about her, you know? Um, I, I do think there's, I think a lot of artists definitely have uh, emotional issues and self-esteem issues. I think a lot of people come to the business to get love. I think a lot of people want adoration from fans, from strangers. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why we're all on social media. That's why we do shows. That's why we're on Instagram. That's why we perform. We want love. We're like, love me, love me, love me, love me. I actually like that a mixed girl is embracing her, her black hair. 
the texture, the natural texture. I thought that was yeah. kind of a dope idea because she has been criticized in the past, being in them racist. Remember she was in some rooms? Was it like, like yeah, she was calling yeah, herself the yeah. N-word and Demonic, letting them call her the racist. N-word. Yeah. Um, I think this is a step in the right direction by yep. kind of embracing the black side. I'm not mad at that. But, you know, I, I, I'm I, not, not going to be quick to dismiss what artists go through. And th even this will include Lizzo as well. Even if they're annoying to us, I still don't approve of people just time and time and time. And like, they get it all day long. They get DMs. They get comments on message boards. And we can sit here and say, well, you're rich. And you know this comes with. At the end of the day, when you're home watching, uh, you know, 600 pound life by yourself you don't feel all that you just see what everyone's saying and i just kind of and a little empathetic to what people actually go through i i do think we should try to like not contribute to it as much as we can but i, I don't let me ask you people... this let me ask you this so when you're online calling yourself the n-word in a room full of white kids or you're you're painting yourself as a devil and making music about how my demons look and wearing devil horns to award shows or and looking crazy like no one's to say anything about that. Oh, no, now it's the should. public's fault. That's why I said the part about you shouldn't contribute to giving extra yeah. stuff. I don't agree with none of that crap. I think that was ridiculous, stupid as hell. And I, I, I still side eye her about that. I really do. But again, as much as we need grace for stuff we be doing online, I just kind of feel like we just can't be quick to write people off because these people are built different. These little younger people, they are quick to end it all over, you know, their feelings and i don't know i'm just saying don't Claudia, Claudia, Cla before you, before you move on i just wanted to i wanted to speak to what jerome bell in the chat said uh jerome bell said she needs to learn from the old school artists don't respond that's how i feel jerome i don't know i know that claudia and armand think differently but that's how i feel i feel like because someone is in the chat saying something negative about me i don't feel like i have to prove to them Otherwise, if they feel that way, I'm not going to want me commenting back. It's not going to change their t change their mind. I, I feel like we don't deserve. I, don't, I feel like sometimes we shouldn't have to respond to every negative thing that people say about us. Oh, you're right. But you're probably a little bit more better adjusted than she is. She obviously has some issues if she's pretending to be the devil. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Right. that's. I don't think either one of y'all have gone online being like the devil. And I think people that do stuff like that cry for help issues. Or they're involved in that crap. Or mm. drugs. Yeah, but I think in just black and white, we just got to admit, people use this stuff as publicity to sell their records. All of this, they use it against us. All this sympathy, this crazy, I'm deleting my Instagram just so I can come back and everybody misses. This is all publicity too. So it's, sometimes it's not, they're just hurting. They just know when to tap that button because they're like, okay, we got to get these numbers up for this next round of release. Ooh, Armand, hmm. if you only had a heart. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. You're too young. <laughs> All right, coming up next. Celebs have a lot to say about transgender day of visibility. And later, two women go to the extreme for some Drake tickets. Oh, Lord, what do they do? Keep it here and find out. We'll be right back. Scene 103, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. I hug you. Yeah. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, I love you too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. 
freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to TGIF. Soulmates in the chat, please hit that like button and show your favorite trio some love. We appreciate y'all. All right, y'all, R. Kelly issued a warning to anyone who was making fun of Diddy's recent home raids and criticized both the investigation and the reactions of others. He said, bleeps out there laughing and making comedian jokes and doing all the other bleep on the radio and everything else, but they could be next he also said he does not believe any of the accusations. What do you think about R. Kelly's <laughs> claims, Armand? Of, what do you think? Of course he doesn't believe it because he's just as guilty. You know what I mean? So this is not some big wow moment. Like, this is not some big prolific moment where we all should be, like, in, you know, standing for R. Kelly. Like, yeah, we agree. You, you said something there, R. Kelly. It's like, damn. Now the fact that R. Kelly is speaking out for you, you got Suge Knight speaking out. If I'm Diddy, I'm thinking, wow, it's getting too close. You know, these these are the wrong people. I need speaking out for me because this is a sign of where I'm going. And the other thing for me I thought was kind of funny, you know, how's R. Kelly on Clubhouse locked up, you know? But anyway, I, I don't believe R. Kelly. I mean, I don't really stand for R. Kelly. I think R. Kelly is a joke, and I don't think he's doing Diddy any justice. You know, they're both guilty. All right. Um, Al, what do you think? Allegedly Diddy, excuse me. <laughs> um Claudia, this is dangerous to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. This this feels very, I feel uncomfortable talking about it because there's a population of black men and women who believe and lean into these thoughts. And, and, and he's almost saying that this is a conspiracy theory. And we, you know, we're seeing that play out in the media, that it's a conspiracy theory. That's a conspiracy theory of setting people like R. Kelly, people like Bill Cosby, people like Diddy are being set up use as an example and and that to me is very polluting it's polluting to our thoughts it's polluting the truth and it's polluting justice you simply cannot be taken advantage of underage girls or grown women without their consent and even underage girls you just shouldn't be with them at all period i mean and we as men whether we're famous whether we're rich whether we're talented, we have to be accountable when we break the law. And I, I, I just feel like there's no room for welcoming this narrative into our community and into our society. I, I, it makes me very icky. It makes me feel very icky. This is dangerous and I don't like it. R. Kelly, if you're watching this, you have all these charges against you and, and, and conviction. Well, all, all this stuff against you and here you are standing up for another man that's con that's being accused of all these kinds of things. You might want to just shut up on this one. And I'm actually trying to, going to speak to a lot of black male celebrities that have been really disappointing me left and right. If you want to support Diddy and you feel like you don't believe the allegations, maybe you might want to just be quiet for a little while until all the stuff comes out. Because, well, he's paying all this money left and right. I don't think he's innocent of everything, in my opinion, Okay. Um, it's looking real bad. Your slip is showing. A lot of y'all slips are showing because I'm I'm waiting to hear one one say this is wrong, you know. And it's it's really a disappointing thing to see because on one hand it's protect black women, it's this that and the third, and then it's like nah, I man, that's my boy. He wouldn't do this. He didn't do this in front of me. Do you think abusers abuse in front of other people? Do you think they, for the most part, they usually do it, and, and that's how how they get away with it. They're usually one person to their victims and they're a different person to the public. And I just feel like uh, R. Kelly, you're sitting there in prison for stuff that you got away with for a very long time. And you're you're are you a character witness? So you're the man that peed on a 14 year old, allegedly, whatever you want to say, you're the character witness for Diddy. You're the you are the one that whisper. Oh, R. Kelly said it. Oh, we should. Yeah. Yeah. R. No. Kelly. Though, like, in a, in a, in a 
And if I'm a, and if I'm Diddy, if, if I'm Diddy, I don't want R. Kelly speaking no. in my defense at all. Don't say nothing. Definitely not. But, but to your point, Claudia, I think it's really interesting. Like, you know, this could be a conspiracy, though. You know, what if a lot of the men that aren't really speaking out um, or saying anything at all, maybe they're a little bit nervous, too, because Diddy is like this big, powerful guy in the industry. So, you know, a lot of these men may have some attachments to some of these things. Like, it doesn't just start and stop with Diddy. It breaks off into many different crumbs. So everybody might have a little piece of this, and they're just trying to see how far the cookie's going to crumble. Yeah. So maybe people are a little nervous. Oh, I, I agree. Listen, the ones that are being quiet, I'm like, I get it. But the ones that are, like, loudly speaking out that have, like, some skeletons in their closets, like, there's been a couple that I know for a fact myself. Well, I know, okay? I'm like, wow, I can't believe you're putting yourself out there like that <laughs> because uh, we, we know about you. Like, you know, it's like if I do something, if we did a story on cussing and I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe people are out here using that kind of foul language. Roll the tape of me and all the times I done done that. I'm not bringing attention to something that I've done myself, you know, to just mm. kind of be a part of the story. I just feel like that's crazy to me. I don't know. Speaking of crazy. All right. Caitlyn Jenner is being blasted for lashing out at Joe Biden after Biden proclaimed Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter. Caitlyn wrote on Twitter, I am absolutely disgusted that Joe Biden has declared the most holy of holy days, a self-proclaimed devout Catholic as Transgender Day of Visibility. The only thing you should be de declaring on this day is he is risen. Can you believe how contradictory this is on Caitlyn's part? Please, please, please. I got to go first. Shut the hell up, Caitlyn Jenner, because you are trolling everyone at this point. Let me just tell you this. Transgender Day of Visibility has always been on March 31st for the 15 years. I think it's been around since 2009, I believe. It's been around for a very long time. And uh, it just and Easter is a holiday that jumps around. It just happened to land. But keep the same energy, Caitlyn Jenner, when Easter falls on 420, I think 420, it was like, it's been on there, it's going to be on that. It just kills me that you just jump on this. And that's why I say Caitlyn Jenner is not, Caitlyn Jenner is not an ally of the trans community, fake ally. And it's the white male privilege is showing. And this is just, this is fake to get attention and it'd be on that Republican um, sweet spot, I guess. Al, what do you think about this and Caitlyn? Well, uh you know, I'm the resident Christian here. And even though I'm not a fan of Caitlyn Jenner, and we know that Transgender Visibility Day has been on the same day. For me, for the president to bring it to light, uh, for the president to speak on it. And let me be very clear. I am. I have on this show for the past four years been very supportive of the transgender community. Claudia has been supportive of the transgender community on here. This did not feel good to me as a Christian. Uh, him highlighting it on Easter Day. I got to be honest. It 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 gave me tone deaf. It gave me weird. It gave me dark. Uh, um, and it gave me uncomfortable. Uh, and and. I probably need to come to terms with that. And because that has, because I need to come to terms with that, it has nothing to do with it being transgender. It just has to deal with anything put there on that day of Easter. I would have an issue with the president highlighting it. That's my personal opinion. And I feel like that this is, this is just an example of how disconnected the Biden administration can be sometimes. Sometimes in so many ways they get it right, but in so many other ways in their in their quest to relate and connect with the transgender community, which I understand that's what the administration is trying, trying to do with this. I think you do alienate a lot of other people that are that are Christian, that are Catholic. And, and, and for me, that's how I felt about it. It had nothing to do with it being transgender. It was just us highlighting something as a day that we're celeb that we're supposed to be celebrated for the, ri the rising of Christ. But well, you know, Al, uh, every single day has like a day. Like I think it's like National Hot Dog Day. Like it's all these other things that we have days right. for, and it just happened to fall. I hear what you're saying as a Christian, but I will say this: it it, it screams of uh, transgenders and gays are not allowed to exactly. be religious and celebrate, and they don't. But they're not. Yeah, no, no, no. Like God I said, it's, it has nothing to do with it being Transgender Day. 
Mm -hmm. Like if it, if it was hot dog day, if mm -hmm. the president said we're, we're celebrating hot dog day, anything outside of what I traditionally respect and, and, and celebrate Easter, I would have felt uncomfortable with. That's just my personal opinion. Okay. Uh, and you are uh, definitely entitled to that. Uh, Omar, what do you think? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, I personally feel like he made two posts. He made an Easter post. And in that, in that same day, he made a transgender visibility post. And I think the outrage, not, for Al, but you know, the outrage for the public is the simple fact that it is transgender. And I think, you know, had this been, you know, National African American Day or National Woman's Day, and he made that post, the outrage wouldn't be there from anybody. No one would care. But because it was tr transgender or someone under the LGBTQ community, that is when it becomes a problem. People want, I'm so tired of LGBTQ people having to live as second class citizens in this country to heterosexual people, to women, black people. I'm tired of that. And I'm glad that he did it because for so long, we always have to take the back seat to everyone else. Everyone else can be highlighted. We can have, our, they can have their moment. We have to celebrate them and put them on a pedestal. But the moment that we get a moment of shine, now it's like, oh, the Christians are offended. This one is offended. So gay people can't be Christians. We can't celebrate Easter. Cause I know the girls were up and down the hallways and the aisleways on church one Sunday. So let the trans people have their moment. We're not second class citizens in the LGBTQ community. And if that simply falls on our day, happy Easter and happy trans visibility day. Period. This is a good comment that SM said. It's not the community's fault Easter switches up uh, every year. Can two things be true at the same time? I will say this. Now, it was the way it was treated. The way it was put out there, again, bad. The Democratic Party. It's like, like he yeah. voted. Yeah, right. It's like, like it he, looked like he decided today. I'm going to make Easter. And, right, and it made it seem like, OK, you, why are you piling on another holiday? But then when I yeah. found out that it's always been on that date, yes. it should have been made more clearly. So people that don't just read the headlines like most people do wouldn't feel a way i get that feeling like it it was seem like it was i'm gonna make easter trend say and right. you don't really want anything else to be on top of Easter. i get it but let's be having the same energy for for hot dog day hamburger day <laughs> national <laughs> conjoin twins day you know yeah. blue ribbon day like they have a lot of days i used to be on the radio and every day we'd highlight this now tyrese joined in on the debate tyrese wrote i s okay can y'all fix the prompt because i don't know by heart tyrese Chimed in on it. Okay, never mind. All right, you got in on the debate. Tyrese wrote, I say this and I speak for every Christian and believer around the world. The Lord Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and he is the resigning Alpha and Omega, Jesus Christ. Do you think the outrage is called for? Well, I guess we already kind of talked about the outrage. Like, why? It just goes to show you, like, it's the fact that it's about LGBTQ, trans. Absolutely. Well, I, I, I didn't take it like that. I, 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 I did not take it like that. I think the administration could have done a better job. Maybe Claudia needs to be the press secretary for the <laughs> campaign. If they combined the two, if they, if they came to the audience and said and taught us that it was always transgender day the 31st, it just happens to land on Easter. So we as a nation are blending the two, are sharing the to on this day instead of it being propaganda like he is naming easter uh transgender day so claudia i think that's a brilliant idea i i i am simply telling you how it was marketed and how i read it and how i felt it made me uncomfortable and i am in the lbgtq plus community and i was i was offended so i i, ha I think i have a right to be offended i have a right to feel how i feel and 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 i think that a better way for the administration to tie and bridge would be to say hey this is landed on the same day this is the time when the when the nation can learn to come together and celebrate two things at the same time because they are two important things to this nation. But would, okay, you I'm feel that, would you feel that way if it was National Black African American Male Day? Would you have all that commentary for that if he was highlighting us on Easter on that day? You probably wouldn't have that same energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. If I'm an administration and I'm trying to win the election, I would not allow for someone, especially the right, to market this day as me claim me making it transgender day, which is going to turn the base of the Trumps off on me in voting. I just won't I, do it. I'll be smarter. I have a solution. Okay, there is a press secretary, Corinna. I'm not going to step on your feet, but I'm going to appoint myself <laughs> the Fox Soul Biden Junior Press Secretary. Uh, I'm going to go to give a stab at this. 
uh, ladies and gentlemen of, of, of the United States of America, uh, Transgender Day of Visibility has been on March 31st for 15 years. And that is a day that we have celebrated the small percentage of America, but they still count and they still matter for their day. And we want to give them visibility. This is something we are dedicated to supporting every year in America because we encompass and embrace everyone. This year, oh, we all know the Christians, first of all, Everyone in America is not a Christian, so everyone doesn't have to be through the lens of Christians, okay? I will say this. We do not want to disrespect y'all. We want you to think, know that we didn't pile this on. Easter jumps around. It just so happens that the two fell on the same day, much like an eclipse. We can find a way in our hearts to honor the Whoa. holiday of Easter Whoa. Whoa. and to honor the transgender community so no one feels left out. We hope we can all, in the spirit of Easter— <laughs> show love to each other and not be fighting amongst each other. Let the church say amen. Okay. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, <laughs> All right. So amen. See, now everyone's included. Yay. All right. Coming up next, two women go to the extreme for some Drake tickets. And later, oh, Lord, really? <sighs> Amorosa discusses the real house of the Potomac. <laughs> Let's talk about it when we come back. Freedom, it's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome, Al Reynolds, and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. Welcome back to TGIF White House. I will be waiting for that call. All right, y'all, listen. We <laughs> care about, we here at TGIF, we have good credit, and you can get good credit too. So let me hook y'all up real quick. Now, if I told you there'd be a massive savings on that new car in about three weeks, you wait, right? Of course you would wait. You'd gladly wait three weeks to save tens of thousands on a new home loan or refi or save hundreds on a major kitchen appliance. How is that possible in three weeks? In a word, score master. Three weeks is how fast the average score master user takes to build their credit score and add up to 40 points. Why wait months or years to build your credit score when a few points uh, when it's doable in three weeks with score master? Now simply go to scoremaster.com before you apply for a loan or credit card or finance anything. In about a minute, score master will reveal how many plus points you can potentially add to your credit score. Visit scoremaster.com slash T and try it for free for seven days. That's, that's right, free. That's scoremaster.com slash T, scoremaster.com slash T. Al, what about it? What are your thoughts on Scoremaster? We've been talking about this for a while. Yeah, you know, the best thing about Scoremaster is that it gives you 
um, notices. It tells you when something's happening to negatively affect your credit or positively affect your credit. It also gives you strategies like what you can do if you're seeking a higher, higher score. I remember, Claudia, when you were on it, you were in the process of buying this house that you're in now, and you've definitely followed those, those strategies and it increased your score, right? I, I remember you talking very positively about that. And for me, I enjoyed those alerts. And I enjoyed those strategies because those are something that you can always use. So it's not like you have to repeat the same mistakes you've made in the past because you know how to handle it in the future. Absolutely. And just getting a reminder, just, just to stay on top of this, and it really has helped. My credit score is pretty, pretty good now. Thank you, score master. S score master. All right, credit score changes, uh, available points, or applying to offers are not guaranteed and may vary. Promotional considerations furnished by score master. Let's get back to some topics. Two women were photographed revealing a shocking confession during Drake's concert. They held up a sign that said, we sold bleep to be here. We love Drake. Of course, the women got dragged on Instagram. Someone wrote, they too far back. Should have sold it for a little more. <laughs> Someone else wrote, if you're going to sell it, at least get floor seats. <laughs> Would you ever sell your body to see your favorite artist in concert? Armand, I'm going to go to you first. Absolutely. Nah, nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell my body for that. Um, but you never know. They may have sold cool, a cootie cat um, maybe through OnlyFans. Maybe they didn't really actually do the do. But at the end of the day, here's the thing. I feel like people do anything to go viral. And I don't feel like it really hit the way that they thought it was going to hit because I don't even think Drake even acknowledged them. You know, they just got dragged on the shade room. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a, a viral attempt gone bad, in my opinion. OK. All right. Al, what do you think? I, I listen just to let you know how old I am and disconnected it was like it gave me sex worker tease like they're not ashamed to be sex workers and they know that you know Drake has been known to buy a little tussie cat every now and then and they were going to throw their hat in the ring to see if their if their little sign worked but in this case did it that's what I want to know did he contact them did he have someone go go you know go meet them that's what I, I want to know if not it didn't work. Ain't nobody seen him that far up. I'm surprised we got a picture. Like, no, that's some <laughs> nosebleed see. I'm gonna tell you this. I hope they just, you know how people just cap on those signs. Like we came all the way from da -da 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 to be here. I think that's fake news. I really do. I hope it's fake news because if you sold your coochie, I I'm sorry. Mm. If you sold your thang thang, I can't if you sold your vagina to get seats in the nosebleed section, how many miles was on it? Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying, what was the discount? What was that about? What was the discount? I don't, I don't really know what seats like. Is that the section where? But that's a big sign, Claudia. That's a big sign. And they listen, put I, a lot of the real question is, who's sign? paying for that cootie cat? It didn't look like it was worth paying for. If we really talking about it. But you know, I if you ever watch Lot Lizards on TV, it's a net, it's on Netflix, and it's like old prostitutes in a in a truck stop. <laughs> they pay. You'd be surprised what gets bought and sold. I, I'm appalled. <laughs> uh, ladies, there's another way of of getting to the concert. Just. But you know, and like, and there's no shit. And I love my girl. Like, I love my sexy reds. I love my Sukihanas. But in this culture, you know, she has a song. I'm selling. Like, this is the culture now. Like, whole culture is a thing now. So everybody mm -hmm. wants to be a hoe because that's the new thing to do. And you know, hoes make money. Hoes are popular. Hoes are fabulous. That's what the rich guys like. Everybody wants to be a hoe. That's the Does new thing. Does anybody want to be a hoe this summer? Al, you want to be a hoe this Absolutely. summer? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Armand just jumped on in there. No, okay. I'm, Armand, aren't you in a, aren't you in a relationship? No, I'm just saying, but who don't want to be a hoe? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you got somebody spending the money. Claudia, you've sat on this platform many times talking about, you know, if you would have did it all over again, you would have found you a rich and, 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 you know, landed a baby. But one, not a hoe. Well, you what? may need to be a hoe for one. One. Let's be very clear. Let's be very clear. Girlfriend. When you are in a long-term relationship or you are married, you are that man's hoe. You, you, you better be because you, he's paying and you better be giving. Uh, okay. Hey. Sure. You better, you better I, I just, maybe I don't, I don't like the term. 
Oh, right. Oh, God. Ow. How I'm about, that, how about Freak? That shirt. How about Freak? Okay. That's BT born, said, right? this is this how folks end up in a Diddy or Kelly situation and play the victim. Okay, we're going to move Ooh. on. Keep alive <laughs> because coming up next, Reverend Omarosa discusses the Real Housewives of Potomac. And later, a third gender option is introduced. Yay. Keep it locked. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to TGIF. Reverend Amorosa sat down with TMZ in an exclusive interview to discuss her reasons for not joining the cast of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Amorosa revealed that her focus is currently on law school and preparing for the bar exam, which would make it impossible to pursue a season on the Housewives franchise. Do you think Amorosa would have made a great addition to the show? Al, what do you think? Um, I personally don't think Omarosa would make a good addition to the Real Housewives fan, uh, franchise. Now, one thing we can talk all the junk we want to about Omarosa, but one thing Omarosa will do, will always do, is make great television. She is that talent that you go get when you want things to get interesting, ugly, divisive, and just write down ugly. And and we know that that's what her brand is. She's contrarian, um, you know, and I, I just don't feel like being on a housewife franchise where she has to share her husband and their relationship. And I think he may be a minister or some some mm -hmm. side like that. I just don't think the two can coexist on that type of franchise. So for me, in the Real Housewives franchise, I don't think it's a good look. But anything relating to television, Omarosa will bring you the views. Absolutely. She is good at that. Alma, what do you think? I think it'd be interesting to see her in, in, a, in a family dynamic and with in, and with the, you know, the women on The Real Housewives. Omarosa is great TV. She's entertaining. You know, she reminds me of like a Nini. Like she has that kind of star power to where she can revive a show. And then you see her in a relationship dynamic and beefing and getting into it. Absolutely. I want to see how she talked to her husband and how she talks to these women and how she cares for her family and, and cares for, her, you know, I, I, I just think Omarosa is she's the key. She's the key. I think she would be great on the show, honestly. Hell no. Not after you done <laughs> sold the black people out and you are right. a Republican. Uh, I'm, I'm for black people, HBCUs, and then you like telling everybody all the black, telling us we're going to bow down and kiss the ring of Trump and the stuff she was saying, all that weird stuff. You are Candace Owens adjacent. Actually, you are worse. And I will say that she is entertaining. She is brilliant. 
and she's 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 she, she's conniving and she's good at tea and that's what makes it so sad that when she kind of sold us out i feel my opinion i felt like i was highly disappointed her i used to be friends with this woman we used to hang out we used to have conversations but when i saw certain things that she's done in real life it totally turned me off and then i just feel like i don't yeah. know who you are you yeah. are a pastor yeah. you're a villain <laughs> you're a wife you're out of control you got all this plastic surgery, but you're a you're a natural woman. I don't know who you are. But you that's why so, she needs to be on TV for all of that right there. Faces. She got <laughs> too many faces for me. And unlike, and I will not sit here and let you compare her to Nene Lee, because although me and Nene are not friends, I will yeah. give Nene that respect. She has never turned her back on the black community the way Omarosa mm. did, and then try to come crawling on back, begging for tickets to the Image Awards and the BT Awards, trying to get back <laughs> out of good graces. She's doing the same, what Candace, like what Candace Owens is doing now, that's what Amarosa has uh -huh. been doing, trying to come back after you went too far. You went too far. And being so... You I just mean she's polarizing like NeNe. Like NeNe, it, and like not you, you can, you can talents pig, are polarizing pig, like that. A pig, um, on. Yeah, I know you like her and you like to be contrarian on this show. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, no. see, like you got it. It's good TV. Who wants to watch a TV with a bunch of boring people that you agree with all the time? Oh, like, I'm not watching that. They you are can, clearly... Get, the Real Housewives get, of Potomac are not agreeing with each other. Are you watching not. that franchise No, I'm not talking all? about Those that. Those ladies got every type of problem, every type of division that you can imagine from colorism all the way down to cheating husbands. I just feel like this. I agree with Debbie Bryant, one of our in the chat, who said Mama Rosa is not a housewife. She's the Grim Reaper. <laughs> and everybody would have their TV on talking about it every week. It'd be viral every week. I would not want to watch her. I, yeah, she, she that would turn me, me off. off. The way she behaved at, like I said, the way she behaved and how she's yeah. done people um, that are black and beloved in our community. Uh, I think it's, you got, it's got a little personal for you guys. I think if you just watch it from as a show, you'd be like, okay, I love to hate her. She's the villain. I just don't like how she turns on black. I mean, she made her mark on Apprentice the very first season yeah. was turning on a black man. How do y'all support true. that? I don't get how y'all support that. Like she turned on a black man and sold him out and like, like kissing up to the white man. That's that's her brand. Mm. You know what I mean? So Potomac is like, I, I want to keep that like black people that kind of like don't hate each other about the blackness part. But I do agree with you. She's entertaining. But keep her on traitors and, and, and yeah, keep her on that type of stuff. Keep her, yeah, but I don't see how you're a villain and then you're also a minister's wife. Like she is, <laughs> and people just don't bat an eye. Amrosa, good luck. And um, yeah, mm. moisturizer. Anyways, during an Easter sermon, a pastor went viral for recreating Jesus dying on the cross. Take a look. Oh, my people, I be trying to rock y'all and it'd be harder and harder every week. Like I really try to be so pro black and love my people, but these kind of things, Al, you are a resonant Christian here, please. Can you please speak on this? I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. I'm tired. I'm tired. I took all my energy. The Amorosa thing took all my energy. Well, listen, let me tell you, it, 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 it just shows such ingenuity to me. I have come from this type of church. So I have come oh. from pastors who try to find ways to connect with their, with their, uh, you know, attendees or with the people who are, and, and, and I'm sure when they were practicing this, that they talked about it, this made so much sense to them. <laughs> and also I feel like there's an element of it, if we want to really be honest, is that pastors now are looking for ways to go viral. And they're looking for ways to get, you know, expand their, their membership. And they are looking for ways, just like we've seen, what's that Atlanta pastor that did the swag surfing and walk it out and how, you know, he, he went viral. And then we have the other pastor who went 
went viral for telling the lady that she needed to take her underwear off and she needed to wear the holy panties. And these type of pastors in these awkward uh, ways uh, actually do connect with people. So in this case, even though as ridiculous as it looked, as ridiculous as the message appears from looking at it right now, somebody in his church are, is clapping, is praising, and hopefully they got the gist of what he was trying to say. I'm trying my best, guys, to find a positive here. But to me, overall, this was ridiculous. <laughs> and it All made right. no sense. Armand, I will go to you, but you know what? We got to go to break. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't know what we talk about when it comes to church. So we don't <laughs> Me up a third gender option is introduced. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Oh god. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You gonna get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's got to come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. I just have to read one comment. Sunny Lovin said, just make it a mockery. I can't stand these heathens. But they were laughing. They were laughing at us. Smiley face, smiley face. So we are some heathens. But you like us. That's why you're here. So you must be heathen-esque as well. All right. The U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service introduced a third gender option. X is now identified as another gender identity. Folks on social media are not having it. One person wrote, you're either a male or a female. It don't got to be complicated. Someone else wrote, America, I'm <laughs> sick of your nonsense. What do you think about this, Herman? Okay, so you guys know I'm for my people, but now this is where it becomes to be too much because I thought we had the other or the non-binary. So I think when we keep trying to add more stuff to it, it does get confusion, confusing and it starts to frustrate people. So we could have just left it at other or non-binary because what does X mean? That's no different than other. So I just feel like, you know, it starts to get too far and then the message gets lost because then people start getting frustrated because it starts to just seem like a mockery. So I think that we need to slow down on it, pick something, stick to it and move on. Al, what do you think? Um, I think this is, once again, the Biden administration trying to draw synergy with the transgender community, in, in my opinion, and that's why they made this stance and announced it. it. It's a little gimmicky to me, and I think the messaging could be done better. What the hell is X? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What is that? Yeah. That's almost an insult. <laughs> Person X? Don't be, well, I'd I know, be called other. I know fem what female is uh, XX and male is XY. Oh, and maybe then it's X, X. And X is just X. And Al uh, Survivor said not X like Elon's platform. You know what? We don't, <laughs> have, we don't have the answer, Sway. We don't have the answer. <laughs> Let's go to Marion's recent tweet. It says, what are you trying to attract in your life? Armand, let's start with you. 
Oh, financial freedom, um, a resurgence for my YouTube platform, you know, and just, you know, I'm trying to manifest, you know, getting on stage and speaking to, and to the public, to thousands of people. All right. Al, what are you uh, manifesting? Um, one thing that I can agree with our, our mind is for me, I, I, I just want freedom across the board. I want freedom from bills, freedom from work. I want freedom from slave to the establishment. I want freedom from debt. I want freedom from discrimination. I just want to live a more freer and fuller life. Same. Um, less days of work, but more money and being able to wake up on a beach. Just I, I feel like this is a, the uh, this, it, I'm definitely in the second half of my life. I'm not, you know, if you're on a roller coaster, I'd be at the top kind of going down now, probably. So <laughs> I, I mean, you keep saying that. <laughs> I, more relaxation, like less. I work, 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 work. I'm crisscrossing the country. That and a, a really, really good sex life. Cause I have, mm. I'm going to, I'm speaking into existence. going to happen real soon. All right. I want to thank my co host, Aaron Reynolds, and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Well, let me, wait, let me ask a question real quick to both of you guys. What does the sex life look like after 50? Oh, honey, it's... Is it still the same as the libido? Are you still interested in sex? You're interested and you're better and you have, like, better means so you can have flyer oh, sex. Okay. Sex yeah. sex Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Stay tuned for Fox. <laughs> we'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, y'all. Have a good night, soulmates. Bye. Bye.